The reason I'm standing before you today as a professor of entrepreneurship is because of the worst day of my life. I'd like to tell you the story of that day and what I learned from it because what I learned actually contributed to an idea worth sharing. This worst day of my life produced a discovery. And this discovery you might call kind of a light bulb. It all started out okay. I graduated in accounting, uh, went to work for one of the great uh, CPA firms of the world as a CPA, served hundreds of audit and tax clients and uh, had the opportunity to go to work for a large multinational corporation and do some turnarounds. I even went uh, to work for an entrepreneur. So when a venture opportunity came along, I thought I was ready. Well, I was wrong. I wrote the business plan. It was a good business plan, maybe even a great one. And uh, on the basis of that plan, I was able to raise almost a million dollars. Um, even got a celebrity endorsement. Recognize the champ? Yeah, so uh, everything was looking good. It was a medium technology venture, which we thought was uh, an advantage at the time, first mover. Our idea was to get our product in large resort hotels. We even had a thousand plus unit purchase order, which we thought would ensure our break even. What I didn't understand was what the experts in this industry all knew. And that is, and I'll try and say this delicately, the purchasing process in this industry required a lot more grease on the wheels than a Mormon boy from Southern Alberta was prepared to apply. So we didn't get the purchase order or any others. And uh, the venture failed. And the worst day of my life proceeded as one savvy investor explained to me each and every one of my entrepreneurial deficiencies in great and voluble detail. Well, here's how I felt. I felt captive. I tried every single skill that I thought I'd perfected, and it wasn't enough. I even got the company acquired by another company to raise some cash, and that was a bust. And so there really was no alternative except to let the venture fail. And it did. But in failing and providing a truly rotten experience, it led to the discovery of a phenomenon, the phenomenon of entrepreneurial expertise. So the story actually continued on and continues to this day, which is why we're here. I had a question after this experience, and the question was this. Why do some founder entrepreneurs succeed and others fail? I didn't have the skills to answer that question, and so when Cynthia, my wife, suggested that I go back to graduate school, I thought, good idea. So I did. And on the basis of that, I learned a few things. First, ventures don't need to fail at the rate that they do. Second, entrepreneur's personality type is irrelevant. Third, entrepreneur's mind map are highly relevant. These are called expert scripts. An expert script 
is both unique to each entrepreneur and yet in some ways is common to all entrepreneurs. These maps, these expert scripts can be acquired by those who seek them. So with the new research skills that I acquired, I tested this hypothesis in well, it's close to 20 countries. And I published the results in the top peer-reviewed journals in the academic world. So, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that novices like I was, which is, you know, educated, familiar, but not yet expert, can't get access to the experts' entrepreneurial scripts so that they can identify the problems and fix them. Now, as a result of that, we end up with a problem, the access problem. And what it causes is a waste of resources and of entrepreneurial spirit. There are two main reasons for this lack of access. The first is, actually, the experts can't quite explain all that they know. This is called the tacit knowledge problem. The second is, each expert has only part of the complete entrepreneurial script. This is called the distributed knowledge problem. And so, if I were to try and put this in concise form, you know what concise form is. People are doing it now. Tell your life story in six words. You know, it's, it's sort of like, I think it's patterned on this idea that was in the play on Broadway, Papa, where supposedly Ernest Hemingway was challenged to provide a screenplay or the ideas for a book in six words, and he took the challenge. And these are the six words. Baby shoes for sale, never used. Right, powerful. So if we were to describe the problem that we're here to talk about today, which develops into an idea we're sharing. It would be, if we were to do it in six words, entrepreneurial knowledge, tacit, distributed, needs access. Which leads to the title of my presentation. Entrepreneurs of the world unite free, captive knowledge from the distributed and tacit problem. So, how do we break the chains on the access library? This is a challenge worth considering. What if we were to gather the stories of all the entrepreneurs, okay, in the world, and what if we were to put them in some kind of a technological, accessible library? Such that we could allow the novices like I was to be able to search that using, okay, this is my super cool search engine, right? So if you have a need, you could find an entrepreneur or two or three or four to tell you the story. And if they tell you the story, you can do the interpreting. Actually, I think the technology's pr probably, or getting close to, being well enough developed that we can create, well, my vision is a hologram that you could talk to. And you could tell what your problem is and have the avatar that you select tell you the stories that are relevant to your problem at that time. So what I'd like to do today is to extend an invitation. This is an invitation to join the Expert Mentor Project. Now, well, what's the Expert Mentor Project? Well, the idea would be to collect all the stories because the stories have within them the tacit knowledge and the collection overcomes the distribution problem. Now to do this, we're going to need 
entrepreneurs, we're going to need their families, we're going to need the technological infrastructure, the Googles and the Microsofts and the Apples and the Yahoos and who knows who else to help us to gather this project together and actually to make it happen. However, parenthetically, this is a huge task and I don't actually know all the things that we need to do. There are a few things I know and a lot that I don't. So first of all, I think what we need is a website. So here it is, www.expertmentor.org. Just log into it right now. It's live. It's not all the way ready, but if you're interested in helping, you can leave your name and your email address. We're in the process of doing a little pilot testing because in this website, there has to be a place for entrepreneurs to upload their stories for users to log in and for the link up, for the expert mentoring to take place. We need questions that all agree to answer so that search engines can be more effective. Search engines depend upon words as search terms, at least presently. And so this website will have and need to have some of those kinds of questions that permit the searchability to serve the users. We need to have evocative prompts, you know, things that bring out the best or that story or that experience that's full of the ideas that have been experienced by an expert entrepreneur. We need a way to translate stories uploaded in a variety of languages. Well, here's what we don't know. We don't know really how we can upload these stories as oral histories and make them searchable and accessible. But we're going to start. And we're going to provide this website where entrepreneurs can log in, provide some calibration information, and write, write their stories. Eventually, the technology will be there so that you can tell the story verbally and it can end up in text in searchable format. How can we get the word to entrepreneurs worldwide that their stories are the treasure of this generation and get their contributions? How do we convince some of the busiest people on the planet to recount these stories? I don't know that pure social consciousness and potential for contribution will be enough. How can we recruit technological help to create each stage of the project, the gathering, the sorting, the accessing, the communicating. How can we enable users of an expert mentor system to extract key insights from the many stories on a particular topic? How can we prepare those who would use the site to make the best use of that without rate wasting, so to be able to use the site before they waste resources of time, money, an entrepreneurial spirit. How can the size and scope of this project be anticipated and directed? How close to all the stories in the world? I mean, it sounds amazing. But the thing about this is, these experts possess what's called personalized knowledge. And this knowledge is perishing over the next 20 or 30 years. These particular stories won't be here. And if we don't capture them, oh yes, there'll be other stories. But if we don't capture these, then this treasure of our generation will dissipate. Now you've probably noticed as I began this talk that on occasion I've used the word captive. As a kid, I I saw, I was frustrated by, I was motivated by unfulfilled possibilities. You might say the story of the worst day of my life was one of those. Um, what I view entrepreneurship to be, and this is after becoming a researcher and studying this in multiple countries, discovering the phenomenon of entrepreneurial expertise, is this. 
I think there is value in human relationships, that that's what it springs from. That inherent value oftentimes does not emerge due to obstacles. Obstacles of lack of information, lack of trust, lack of technological possibility. And that what entrepreneurs do is they remove those obstacles so that the opportunities that are there, waiting, inherent in our sociality, in our human relationships, can emerge and provide value to all. So, in my life and in my entrepreneurial career, these three words really are at the core of my academic mission. Free the captive. The kind of captivity that entrepreneurs liberate is economic captivity. Entrepreneurship can liberate the desperate poor, can bring unutilized or underutilized talents to the fore. They can bring out great social objectives and they can identify opportunities that can be accessed by all. And they can create jobs. In the July 2012 issue of National Geographic, Russ Reimer, who's a writer, and Lynn Johnson, who's a photographer, published the Vanishing Voices, and this is what they said. One language dies every 14 days. By the next century, nearly half of the roughly 7,000 languages spoken on Earth will likely disappear as communities abandon native tongues in favor of English, Mandarin, or Spanish. What is lost when a language goes silent? So here's what I'm wondering. Over lifetimes, certainly more than is represented here, over lifetimes, stories have been built. These stories are perishable. What is lost when these stories go silent? Well, this is the idea behind the Expert Mentor Project. What I'm hoping is that before these stories vanish from the earth, that we, together, will begin collecting them. We'll start now. And for the rest of my career, I intend to try and collect those so that what we have an opportunity is to free the captive knowledge that's perishable and in the minds of these expert entrepreneurs and free the captives of the novice entrepreneurs who are doomed to attend the school of hard knocks, which I experienced. And I can tell you, it's hard, and it knocks you around. And if they can avoid that, then we don't waste the resources of money and of entrepreneurial spirit. So what I invite you to do is to join me in the Expert Mentor Project. Entrepreneurs of the world, unite free captive knowledge. Thank you.